Welcome to the warm-up presented by Ottaville Bank as we are at Stadium Park to talk Delphi St. John's football. And we're joined now by the head coach of the Blue Jays, Todd Schulte. And Todd, you've been doing this for quite some time. Does it ever get old this uh, first weekend of August getting out there and hitting two days? Uh, no, you know, it's an exciting time of the year. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that's put into getting to this point, uh, whether it's the off-season weight room, the agility workouts in the mornings. It's you know, after a while that becomes a little tiresome. So this point where you're actually coming out of your locker room, you're getting a chance to go out and practice. That's that's the fun stuff. It's the stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm into the coaching football fours to be out coaching football. <laughs> so yeah, uh, definitely uh, needed to change your pace. And this this is this is fun. This is the fun stuff. Over the years, have, have you altered, have you changed your approach to how you get ready for the season? Um, you know, we've changed some things in the weight room uh, workout wise, just trying to stay with the advancements of, you know, making a better functional athlete and, you know, not so much concentrating on, you know, how big and strong we are. We want to be functional. We want to move and, and, and be able to, to get a, get in different places on the field. So uh, th that has changed. But uh, as far as our approach to our, our program, it has not changed. I mean, we've had good success and, you know, we're going to continue to work that way. And um, even our two-a-day schedules, we, we've tried to vary here a little bit every once in a while, but we, we just we like what we've been doing, and that's two separate two-a-days at certain times, and it just works for us, and, and we're comfortable with that, and our kids are comfortable with that. So, um, you know, if it's if it's not broke, why try to fix it? Exactly. Can't argue with the results coming off another trip to the state semifinals, yeah. lost to eventual champion Marion Local. You look back at the 2013 season, you started off two and four, but you were a much better team than two and four, and you proved it down the stretch in, in that playoff run. Yeah, to be two and four, and then end up in the state semifinals and get get beat by Marion Local, who was the eventual state champ, and you know it was kind of as a no-brainer going in that they were the odds-on favorite, and and they, they did what they needed to do. Uh, but to, to be two and four, and you know at that point where you're at a crucial time in the season, where you're going to start to lose the kids and their confidence, our kids hung right in there, and uh, you know, and I told the kids after. The, the 15th year of coaching, we've had some great accomplishments here, but that was probably my most fulfilling year as a, as a head football coach, just to see where we were at, struggling to get to two and four of those. And, and, and from there, we had to win every game to get where we were at and get in the playoffs, and the kids met the challenge, and we had some great games along the way with Versailles and overtime and the Minster game back and forth here. So I was, it was fun. It was fun at the end just to see, man, we were really – we weren't that good at the beginning of the year, and to where we're at now, we were we were really happy. I was happy for the kids and our and our coaching staff stuck with it, and they worked really hard too to get our kids where they needed to be. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of the gratifying parts of coaching is when you can see that transformation, you can see the improvement from week one to week ten. A couple of weeks away from the, the start of the season, what uh, what improvement are you looking to see during this preseason portion? Well, you know, right now we're, we're looking for guys. We're looking for people to fill in that uh, first round of 11 on both sides of the ball special team. So uh, we're doing a lot of evaluating. We, uh, there are going to be a lot of new names and faces that are taking the field for us. There's going to be some ones you've seen out there and have had success for us. But uh, for the most part, there's going to be a lot of guys, a lot of new guys in, in places. And, and I say we're going to be inexperienced, but you might look at our, our depth chart and say, wow, there's a lot of seniors on there. Well, probably a lot of those seniors were playing JV football last year. They weren't playing on Friday night. So uh, we are going to be inexperienced. And uh, I think it's crucial. These two-a-days are really crucial for us. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to be caught at two and four. Uh, like we were last year. We want our advancement to start early and to see it week one, see it through our scrimmages that we're getting better each week. And, um, you know, and right now is a big part of that is we're, we're trying to find the right guys in the right position and get that right group to go and, and let them gel together. And, and we want to do it pretty quick and just, just to be ready week one more so than we were last year. I suppose the offensive line is one of those areas where you're really looking to, to find the right group. Graduated a pair of all-conference linemen last year, and we know how important that line is to the St. John's attack. Well, there's no doubt. That's that's where we look at first. You know, up front offensively is, is the key for us here. St. John's always has been, and I, I guess as long as I'm here, that's that's where we focus first. And you're right, you know, we, we've got a lot of guys to replace. Uh, uh, Austin Schulte's one of our starters coming back at a tackle, and he's going to have to take on a bigger role for us. Wes Bittner, who was a guard for us last year, you know, we're going to move him to center, and he's going to be the focal guy in the middle. So, uh, you know, we've got two returning starters, but we're looking for a, a handful more to get in there and be able to do the job for us. And, and We'll play our best five up there. Doesn't matter. We might have to move guys around as we go, but our best five are going to be up front. Got to re replace Tyler Jettinghoff in the backfield. What is the what is the backfield looking like right now? Well, that's that's right now. Uh, if, if we had to start. The game today would be by committee. Um, mm -hmm. well, we're not decided on one guy. There's a couple guys of three through the summer months and through our seven on seven and our, and our, our team camp we had. Uh, there's a couple guys that are going to be back in there. And um, as of right now, going through two days until we get pads on, it's, it's kind of hard to tell who's going to 
you know, take the step forward. We want to see who can get out there and, and move with the ball in their hands. So, again, that's kind of the exciting part of this. We, we got some guys, we think three, four guys, hey, let's see who's going to be the best one. And, you know, they're going to have to go out there and show it on the practice field to get that job. Other side of the ball defensively, what are you expecting from the Jays? Well, again, it's looking up front. You know, we lost some key ingredients up front, but we do have Trent Clawson coming back, who is the starting D tackle for us, started from day one last year, um, from week one on. So, you know, we're, we're excited to have him back. Uh, we got a man in the middle back, but Austin Hine was their starting middle linebacker, so he's back. And Evan Hayes on defense, who uh, you know kind of played everywhere for us in the defensive backfield, and he's kind of the key ingredient for us. And then Nick Martz, who started at quarterback and free safety for us last year, we got him coming back going both ways again. So you know, uh, defensively, we got a few less parts to replace, but we still do have definitely uh, some guys we need to get replaced over there. Not taking anything away from the opponents' weeks three through eight. But you start off with the Elida LCC, finish with Coldwater and Marion Local. Talk about a, a tough start and a tough finish to a campaign. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, yeah, you look at our two non-league games, it fits right in with our league schedule. You know, when you play Elida and LCC, they're going to be hard fought, very physical games. They're going to be well coached uh, teams. Um, so yeah, it fits right in. Then yeah, if you want to fast forward all the way to the end, I mean, we're not going to fast forward. You guys can fast <laughs> forward for us. Yeah, we, we know that Marion and Coldwater are probably the two top teams in our league. And I, I, I would bet on them to repeat as state champions if somebody has wanted me to bet um, in, in their respective division. So yeah, it, we'll, we'll just have to see where we're at. And, and that's, that's why it's so important for us that we got to see us progress pretty pretty rapidly through two a days in our scrimmages because we know what's coming. We're in one week and two. We don't have two non-league games in there where you can get warmed up and uh, they're just an extension of our scrimmages. It's it's for real. Those opponents for real and we know it's going to be a good game. All right. Thank you very much, Todd Schulte, head coach of the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. Need to take a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, Audible Bank will have us sitting down and talking with some more players as Matt Finkel will take over. Welcome back to the warm-up here in Stadium Park. This warm-up brought to you by Ottoville Bank, joined by two Blue Jays sitting directly to my right, Wes Bittner. He's a center and linebacker, a senior. Evan Hayes on the end, defensive back and wide receiver. Can you believe it, senior year, guys? What is, Evan, Evan, start with you. What does it feel like knowing this is the last, the beginning of the end in the blue and gold? Um, I'm not quite sure that it's sunk in yet, but it's, uh, it's definitely a pretty odd feeling, but I think we're making the most of it and we're having fun, which is important, so I'm excited for the season to start. What about you, Wes? Feel like senior year or not at all? Uh, not really. All the years kind of flew by, so I'm excited for senior season, but I wanted to last a long time, I hope. Well, that, speaking of lasting a long time, last year you guys went all the way to the state semifinals following the Marion Local. How much does that loss still sting here on basically what is the first day of camp? Yeah, it's um that loss was pretty devastating. It kind of drove us in the all season to hopefully get better and, you know, come back this year and hopefully repeat what we did last year, but maybe start a little bit better. So uh, it really drove us in the off season. And Wes, you're on the line. You're moving from guard to center. What is the line looking like this year? Is that going to be a big change for you, changing positions? Um, well, I played center from sophomore and freshman year, so I'm kind of used to playing center, so it shouldn't be that big of a transition. Um, the line's a little smaller this year, but we still have about three guys. I think they're over 200 pounds. Other ones are real close to us, so we should be I think we'll be fine. We'll be quicker this year, so that'll be good. And Evan, you guys started a little bit slow last year, two and four, but then you rattled off four wins in a row, got to the postseason, and then that's all you needed. How important would it be for you to get off to a, a faster start this year? Uh, that's very important. Uh, our schedule, there's really no um, games where we can take off. And starting out with Elida and LCC, those are two really tough games, but we know we have to start out better than we did last year if we're going to want to keep our playoff hopes alive. And playing in the MAC is so difficult. What does it mean to you to play in what is arguably the best football conference in Ohio? I think it's a lot. It means a lot. Um, well, you never really have those off weeks. You always have to come prepared because even the teams at the bottom tier of the MAC are still top tier teams. They um, play physical. They're aggressive, and you can never really relax because you always have to be on, the, on your A game. And Coldwater, Marion, local are at the end of your schedule this year. Those are two state champs. Are those? I know Coach won't let you look ahead, I know that, but are there two <laughs> games that you have your eye on? Uh, yeah, I mean, not looking ahead, those are two really solid teams and they return a lot, so uh, they have some ex exceptional athletes, and, but we can't look ahead any games, but they're going to be pretty good this year. 
All right, guys, best of luck to you this season. And we need to take a break on the warm-up presented by Autoville Bank. When we come back, we'll be joined by two more Blue Jays here on the warm-up. Back here in Stadium Park, the third down of the warm-up presented by Autoville Bank. Two more St. John's Blue Jays joining me now. Nick Martz to my right, the quarterback and defensive back. Austin Hine on the end, linebacker and tight end. And Nick, we'll start with you. You're a returning starter, uh, but you lost two big running backs in the backfield. So do you feel a little more pressure to, to continue that offensive output? I don't know if I'd say pressure, more, more responsibility. But, I mean, everybody's got to step up and play their game and we just got to execute, really. And Austin, on the defensive side of the ball, what's the defense looking like this year? Where would you say some of the strengths lie? Well, we are returning in several starters from our defense last year. We did lose two of our linebackers, but one of them, the one that we have stepping up now, did get varsity experience last year. So I think our linebackers have good depth, and then our defensive backs are returning some starters, too, so that'll help us out a lot, too. Camp's just getting underway here, two-a-days. Do you like the two-a-days format? Is it something you're used to? Yeah, we're going in fourth year, it's getting pretty typical, kind of routine. It's kind of getting just back on track, really. What's your favorite part about the format? Is Do you like having that break in between? Is it time to relax, or do you stay pumped up in between practices? Yeah, it's nice to have a break in between practices. You get off your feet, you can go home and take a nap if you want to, get some food in you. Just nice to have a little break in between. Talked about it a little with the other guys playing in the MAC. What, do you, what did you learn coming up on your fourth year playing in such a competitive conference? I learned there's no, there's no other conference like it. Uh, it's probably the best conference around. It's very fun to play in, very energetic, and I can't wait for this season too. What about you? Well, the MAC is always a physical conference. You always have teams beating up on each other, which I think really helps those teams if they can get in the playoffs. It helps them make a deep run. And Austin, you guys have three scrimmages this year, one against Bath, and then you go on the road to Van Buren and Salina. What are you hoping to get out of those leading up to week one? It'll be really nice having three scrimmages. It just gives you a chance to develop some experience for the guys that don't really have any. Then it gives the coaches a chance to figure out really what we need to focus on and work on still. So. Nick, what's your favorite part about playing for Coach Schulte? Just how energetic he is. He's a really great guy. He knows his stuff. He's played football for quite a few years. He's, really, he's a really good mentor, and he's just really, really fun. Is conditioning a big point for Coach Schulte? You guys, he has you working hard? Yeah, this year the conditioning was tough. We're going to have a lot of guys that are going to have to be able to play basically the whole game, so he has us getting in shape for that. And you would agree with that? You working hard? Yeah, it's probably the hardest we've worked in a while. Well, you heard it here from the Blue Jays. They've been working hard. They're ready to go for the season. They open up against Elida on the 29th, then take on LCC on the road. That's weeks one and two for Delphi St. John's. Thanks to our guests. For Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on the warm-up this edition presented by Ottoville Bank.